Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yep. Why not start off with some terrifying music? Because this show is about to get real strange. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Monday Night Raw After Show and After Buzz TV. Uh, yeah, don't adjust your internet television screens. Don't look into any other 1939 cameras we have. We have a lot of cameras in here. No need to check any of them out. Uh, I'm solo tonight, all right? Um, Dale is busy. Kathy's under the weather. Hell, I'm actually really sick. My nose might run on camera. I don't know, but you guys deserve a show, and so what the hell? Here I am. Uh, I called everybody. I called all the, the, the favorites. I called Eddie Pence, Brido, Burns, Nat Bamel, Rome Moore, uh, Rosenberg's busy. No Eric Barnes. No Trick Sully. Called everyone I could. Carlin Baith is also busy uh, working for the LA Kings. So guess what? You're stuck with me. So I figured, why not? This might be our, our final show of the year because uh, everyone's going around for the holidays. I'm thinking, why not do a revolutionary show? So if I have to be solo, there's one other person that I could really team up with to make the show amazing. And that's me. Split screen. Is it working, Steve? It works. Yeah, split screen. So double the terror. Um, and by the way, if you want to call in, make it happen, guys. 424-256-1729. Um, I'm trying to stay on chat roll, but what the hell? I don't know what I'm doing on chat roll. So, uh, yeah, let's do this, guys. We've got a lot to talk about. A lot has happened in the past 24 hours. That damn music is scaring me. Please, thank you, Steve. Can you talk to me at least, Steve? No. <laughs> this is going to be great. And by the way, everyone in chat roll is cracking me up, so... Um, Keep it going. Get the hobo. Hobo's busy. He's winning predictions titles. He's winning the Hollywood Heritage Championship. He's a busy guy, so he can't be here either. Can't be here either, guys. Uh, here we go. We didn't have a TLC after show. Here's the Raw after show. What I want to do is I figure let's talk about everything. Because let's be honest, Raw was an extension of TLC. Um, a lot. I, I really enjoyed TLC. I know with every pay-per-view, there's going to be some people that like them, some people that dislike them. I thought a lot of matches told good stories, considering there were so many matches on the show. I really thought the whole thing ran really smoothly. I mean, the Ryback-Kane shares match, that was pretty much what we expected it to be. Uh, Rowan and Big Show, you know, a lot of people were kind of talking smack on that match prior to the TLC pay-per-view. I thought it was great. I thought they pulled out a lot of stops. They pulled out a hell of a lot of stairs. And, uh, and Eric Rowan got his ass kicked twice in a row, got his ass kicked on Raw. A lot of us didn't predict that. I know I predicted Big Show to get demolished by Eric Rowan. Two nights in a row, Big Show WMDs him, knocks him out, pinning him with the stairs. thought that was a really interesting way to do things. So uh, let's get to the major points of TLC. But first off, off the top, very good friend of mine. Many of you know who he is, Nigel McGinnis. Um, he's uh, obviously been a wrestler for years, Ring of Honor, TNA. Uh, he has an amazing, do amazing documentary, The Last of McGinnis. He has a new project that he is embarking on that is an incredible idea, and he started a Kickstarter for it. So I told him I'd give him a shout out. Uh, he's on Twitter at McGinnis Nigel. Go to LAFights.com, and it'll tell you everything about it on Twitter. It's hashtag LAFights. Please check it out. I think you'll, you'll read a lot of interesting stuff regarding of whether or not you want to donate. Um, he's a great guy, great friend. So check out LA Fights, LA Fights com. All right, let's do this. TLC highlights. Dolph Ziggler and Luke Harper. I don't know about you guys, but to me, you know, you look at the, the standard bear of, of ladder matches. Everyone looks to Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon, and justifiably so. But I think we can all agree there are moments of that Dolph Ziggler, Luke Harper ladder match that really brought out the feeling of that Shawn Michaels uh, Razor Ramon ladder match. There were certain moments there that both guys, obviously we all know Ziggler can do any stunt imaginable. The guy's a daredevil. But Luke Harper, for his size, can do everything. And what a way to start off the show. I mean, that match could have closed out the show. And kudos to both those guys. I mean, Ziggler completely getting cut open, uh, rushing back in the ring to get Harper off the ladder. Just incredible moments there. I'd love to know what you guys think if you want to call in. I'm trying to check out chat roll here. Uh, but that was incredible. And, and Ziggler winning in his hometown. 
Talk about a guy that's coming into his own. I mean, the announcers were putting him over. You know, all the fans have wanted for years. What, what's going on with Ziggler? Why is he not getting the push he deserves, whatever? That's not up for us to decide, but maybe good things come to those who wait because we are seeing a run by Dolph Ziggler unlike any run we've seen in his career and unlike any run we've seen in quite some time in the WWE, and it's all completely deserved. That guy does things in the ring every single time out that the fans feel. Like, it's really hard to draw 18,000 people into you, and Dolph Ziggler finds a way to do it. And Luke Harper, a perfect enemy for him in that match. And I can't say enough good things about that ladder match to start off. I mean, damn, really. <laughs> you had moments where it brought you back to being a kid again. Um, you know, watching the very first ladder match, watching, you know, other dangerous stipulation matches. These guys pulled it off, and uh, just a great start to TLC. Moving on, big show, Eric Rowan. Already talked about that. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. You know, obviously Cena has his detractors, and Seth Rollins, I think, is obviously coming into his own as well. Can we all agree that John Cena and Seth Rollins have developed an amazing chemistry after watching Monday Night Raw and the TLC match? Uh, we had a steel cage tonight. We had the tables match last night. These guys know how to tell a story together, and, and people can say what they want about Cena. When he's matched up against someone that is incredible in the ring, he, he tells a great story, and they, they did it last night. So many amazing spots. They, they did a double, uh, the A through the table. They, they dove off together through the table. And then, of course, um, J&J Security, they're putting in work, guys. <laughs> J&J Security is putting in a full workload. I don't think six months ago, Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble thought they'd be taking bumps like they are now. But I just think they're the perfect fools to go along with Seth Rollins. Uh, they're, they're barely security guards. But, man, they know how to just – they know how to rile the crowd up. They know how to almost get the job done. But at the end, they're always foiled. They always do something stupid or they always get beat up. And I think that that's what you need. That's what you need out of heels. And, and Joey Mercury and Seth Rollins have always been great workers, and they know how to do it. And so uh, J&J Security, they're getting marked up. They're getting beat up. And, uh, and then and all the matches are better for it. Uh, just um, so many incredible spots here. You know, Roman Reigns with the assist, uh, he got a bit of a mixed reaction. Um, you know, that's, I guess, to be expected. Uh, we'll see how the fans decide his fate over the next couple of months there. Um, obviously, uh, spearing Big Show through the table there. And uh, I just really, really enjoyed the match. And whether or not Cena won, he did. Whether or not people are happy about it, I, I imagine most adults probably are not thrilled. Most kids are really happy about it. The match was incredible, and the way Raw ended, it makes you wonder, are we going to have a John Cena, Seth Rollins, Big Show, not Big Show, uh, Brock Lesnar, Triple Threat? Who knows? But these guys know how to tell a story. I thought the Steel Cage match, to do that within 24 hours of TLC, kudos to them. I think we have a phone call on the line, so let's get right to it. Who is this? Emmanuel Dominguez. Yo, what up, Emmanuel? How's it going, man? I'm doing good, and you? I'm great, dude. What do you want to talk about? Um, TLC was okay, I mean, um, Just okay. Dolph Ziggler really did a great job. Um, basically, what I thought about it, you know, the crowd was so into it and got burned out really quick. What, what, why do you think they got burned out really quick? Because Ziggler and Harper was so good? Um, of course, because um, they wanted to see Dolph Ziggler to win the match and, and you know, there was so much impact and I don't know what else to say about it, but those that stair match stair match and the steps match yours it's just horrible. You didn't like Big Show and Rowan at all? No. Nope. Really? It was kind of just out there it's just you know, they're doing doing their own thing. What about them didn't entertain you? Because that's eight hundred pounds worth of, of two big dudes that are destroying each other with stairs. I mean, at one point, he, he kind of speared him through the stairs. I mean, that's not, that's not impressive in the least to you? I thought they did a really good job considering, you know, Big Show's a guy in his early 40s, and Eric Rowan is a dude six foot 19. So the, you, didn't yeah, really, you, um, you didn't dig it, huh? Well, no, it's like, no, don't get me wrong. They did a, uh, like a good job, just like at times they had those weird spots that – they had both like they had that chemistry together as, as well. Okay, I mean, I'm looking at chat roll here. It seems like a lot of people are are being very harsh on TLC, and that's that's their opinion. I'll be honest with you. I thought, considering this was the placeholder to to Royal Rumble, 
I really thought the guys put they really put themselves out in the line there. A lot of dangerous stipulation matches, and uh, and I thought they were all really well executed. But uh, what else do you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah that was the, that's the thing because TLC was too much stipulation, too, too many weapons to use. Um, well, that's what TLC is. is. For me, the, uh, personally, I thought it's a good like it's a good pay per view. Don't get me wrong; it's not the worst pay per view of the of the, of the night uh, uh, of the the whole year. But you know, it was okay for what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ambrose ending was kind of you know unexpected. You you know, like there was like a cartoon moment. You're like it just the TV just exploded in, in the sights, and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> No, I'm with you on that a little bit. I thought the the way the Ambrose um, Wyatt ending was that was a little, a little bit strange because, you know, Ambrose didn't lose because of the power of Bray Wyatt. He lost because he decided to play with some faulty electronics. And so, I I get it. It had a it had like a CZW vibe to it. The way you know Ambrose used to do hardcore matches, the explosion in his face and everything. I see your point there. That was an odd way to end the pay per view, but uh, yeah. Monday Night Raw was okay. I mean, it's a, they had the two big moments, just the, the Brock Lesnar surprise, and and that was about it. I mean, most of the earlier stuff were forgettable. Not that much to remember about this Raw. You didn't like Raw either. Uh, give it a six out of ten. I mean, like it's was, it was just average. It's one of those Raws to skip. Um, but um. Other than that, the cage match was uh, pretty good. I mean, I really like the um, Rollins and Tina. They, they, uh, they work pretty well together. No, you're right. I mean, the cage, like I said, the cage match, they told a really good story. Well, dude, Emmanuel, thanks for calling in. We have another phone call, uh, so we'll yeah, talk no to you problem. soon, brother. Good job for calling in. Thanks. All right, let's see who we got next on the line. Who's this? Hello? Hey, what's up, man? What's up? Who's this? Yeah, this is... um. Jason. Uh, what's up, Jason? Yeah, I think I'm on the other east. I think I'm on a different coast. Okay. You're calling in the yeah. Raw after show. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay, so what do you want to talk about? I, I watch you guys every week, so. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to talk about, like, Bray Wyatt. I think he's the best superstar on the roster by far. I, I can't really disagree with you. I mean, you look at a guy that has everything. Uh, no one can... No one can scare you more than Bray Wyatt in recent years. Uh, no one can cut a promo like him. No one can work in the ring like him. What do you think of the main event last night? I thought it was pretty good. I thought um, that it was Wyatt's first main event win, so he deserved it. That means that uh, Ambrose lost two main events, but, but I thought it was a great match. I thought that Cena Rollins probably should have main evented considering how it ended and stuff, but I liked Wyatt and Ambrose. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised when uh, when Cena and Rollins was was earlier in the card. That told me that something strange was going to end with, you know, Wyatt and Ambrose. Uh, overall, where yeah. do you see this? Where do you see this going between Wyatt and Ambrose? To me, I don't think it's over yet. I kind of it could go to the Rumble, but I think that now that Wyatt won by DQ at Survivor Series and now he won in the main event at TLC, yeah. Wyatt kind of already won the rubber match, so. If they have a and if they have a, a third match at Rumble, it would probably like open up the show if Lesnar's going to be there too. So it wouldn't really matter that much if Ambrose kind of got the win there. Okay, I mean, yeah, the Royal Rumble is always a wild card because you have to have you know 30 guys um, in the Rumble, uh, not Batista this year, <laughs> but yeah. So it's really hard. To, you have to have some big matches centered around the Royal Rumble. And the thing is with Bray Wyatt or, or Dean Ambrose, I mean, whether they win or lose their characters are always so incredible. I mean, Dean Ambrose is really just an extension of himself. The guy is really yeah. off kilter. And so I think whoever he works with, it's going to be phenomenal. And you just happen to have, in my opinion, the two, I, I love watching both those guys. So I think wh whichever direction yeah. they go, it's going to be great. Yeah, definitely. I kind of was like ranking um, all seven superstars of the year yeah. that they had. And I put Wyatt ahead of all members of the shield only because, because, um, only guy to beat Daniel Bryan clean in like a year. Good point. He had the best character development by far. Most independent. Like if I feel like if Wyatt was like looked more like a Ziggler or a Rollins or Ambrose, he would get more credit because he like carried everything by himself. All right. Like he all he did everything by him, by himself pretty much. I feel you there. Quick answer before you uh, before I had to let you go. Uh, Bray Wyatt, who's he facing at WrestleMania 31? Go. I heard Undertaker, but I think. Him and Lesnar would 
potentially be the greatest match of all time. Wow. No way. That's a great idea. Wyatt and Lesnar, like, I'm just, and if you're not sold on the idea by itself, if you're not sold on the match, just think of Wyatt and Heyman promos. That's Oof. it. Oh, my God, yeah. I love that idea. Incredible, yeah. All right, well, Jason, thanks for and calling in, Wyatt man. Wyatt and, and, like, of course, I also wanted to see Wyatt versus the Authority at one point, but, of course... That didn't happen. Well, the authority's not going away. I mean, they're they're, they're going to be back at some point. But uh, that was a great call, Jason. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, watch you guys every week. Watch you guys right now. Thanks so much, man. All right. I think we got someone else, right, Steve? Caller's on the line now. Dude, this is so much fun. All right, who is on the line? Uh, this is Matt. Hey, what up, Matty? How you doing, man? Where are you calling from? Um, South, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay, what's up, man? On the yeah. East Coast feed? Uh-huh. Cool, yeah. man. Can I call Can I call into the Raw After Buzz one? Yeah, this is Raw After Buzz. Right. You're, you're talking to me live on the show. Oh, all right. Hey, is, hey Johnny, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, you really much. Hey, you know, <laughs> I want to talk about uh, the Bray Wyatt thing, if that's right. Yeah, go for it, man. That's what we're talking about anyway. All right, so, you know, Bray Wyatt's one of my favorites. Him and Luke Hubbard are awesome. I enjoy both matches at TLC. <laughs> But what are your thoughts about the rumors of the uh, Wyatt and Undertaker match? I mean, I think, you know, there's going to be Undertaker rumors regardless of what's going on because, you know, he lost to Brock Lesnar. Nobody wants to see the Undertaker's run and losing to Brock Lesnar. The thing is, though, you know, people have to realize the guy is he's, – he's getting up there in age. He's already had multiple surgeries and – he may be at the point where he doesn't feel comfortable, you know, wrestling another match. Now, Bray Wyatt, uh, Bray Wyatt and The Undertaker, would that be legendary? Absolutely it would. It's like you have the afterlife meets the occult, if you will, or or the paranormal. So what would your thoughts be on that match? Uh, it, to me, if, if this happens, The Undertaker's passing the torch to Bray Wyatt. That's why I think it's going to happen with that. With the whole mystique of, the, of Bray Wyatt, the way he was is being built like Undertaker was back in like 1990s. Okay. I mean, the thing is, yeah, you're right. I mean, Taker, Taker put over Lesnar huge, and a lot of people still don't agree with that, but it all depends on how Lesnar's run ends. If, if he doesn't sign a new contract and he's out after WrestleMania 30, then I, I, you, got, you got to question a little bit of The Undertaker losing, but if Lesnar's in for a decent run, like he is now with the championship, like, you know, Vince said he's a, he's a special attraction. Well, I don't know about you, but when he showed up on Raw tonight, that felt like a special attraction. I didn't watch most of Raw tonight. I was kind of like flipping back. I was watching like a Samurai movie at the same time, so. Okay. That's way, wait, wait. <laughs> you went back and forth between a Samurai movie and, and Monday Night Raw? Yeah. Well, hey, listen, I love the Roroni Kinchin series, okay? That's like my... I'm like not my hating. Anime, dude. I, dude, I'm not hating on Samurais. Trust me, they'd kick my ass. Uh, oh, speaking of... Uh, all right, Seth Rollins, I want to talk about that real quick. Go for um, it. They keep bring, he keeps talking about Sting. Do you think they're... At, not like at SummerSlam or not like that, but like probably like Survivor Series. Do you think you'd see a Seth Rollins-Sting match and Sting put over Seth Rollins? I mean, I think if we're going to see a Sting match, it's going to have to be WrestleMania, right? Well... From my understanding, his his contract is for either four or six appearances with WWE. Okay, well, he's, well, we already got one. We got I mean, one I for sure. I can see him wrestle four, five, four, three times here. You know, we got we got triple. If it's going to be Triple H or WrestleMania, that's one. Mm-hmm. And at SummerSlam, you can do Bray Wyatt, and then Survivor Series, I guess Seth Rollins, and then, and then if Undertaker and decides to uh, tap it. Uh, wrap it up at like 32 since it'll be in texas sting and takers where you do it there i mean for me i would almost rather see sting have a feud that lasts a matter of months somehow obviously not with him being on tv every week but um obviously there is the the build there with him and triple h i I would like to think we'd see sting a few times but it's like brock lesnar we don't want to see we don't want to see sting too much we want it to feel really really special when he does show up so um but you're right. I mean, I think we're definitely going to see him at WrestleMania, and I think Survivor Series would be another perfect event for Sting as the one-year anniversary of his debut. Um, so, yeah. Really. I, I just wish I just wish that the whole Owen Hart thing didn't happen when we could have Sting coming to the rafters. Yeah, I mean, that, that obviously was one of the worst tragedies um, in the history of WWE, and 
And look, you, you know, you have to play it safe. A lot of that was an awful thing, and and you're I, right. But I wonder. I mean, he doesn't have to come to the roster, but he can like, can he? Is he are they allowed to hang out there? Is he can just like hang out there like he normally, like usually, or just or? I mean, you got to hang on the crowd. You got to remember too. I mean, a lot of fans watching might not even necessarily remember Sting doing that per se. And plus, WWE doesn't necessarily want to copy WCW. I mean, that was a complete WCW thing. So they they wanted to do their own thing. He had a big, you know. So it's possible there. Oh, no, I get you. It would have been amazing. What was the last thing you want? Oh, uh, who, all right, so who, do you think they're bringing Adrian Neville up from the NXT roster after he lost the NXT title? That's why I want to know. Well, we got the Ascension coming up. I mean, is Neville ready? Absolutely. He's He still kind of struggles <clears throat> on the mic. Uh, you know, part of it is, is the accent thing. I, I don't know. We'll see what they do with him and Sami Zayn. I mean, it seems to me like that's the end of their, quote, feud, because um, Revolution was just phenomenal. Everyone knows it. Uh, couldn't be more proud of everyone that put that show together, including Smiley Katz, who used to be the host of this show. Great work down there, everyone. So I would think Neville is the next to come up, um, but we'll see. Uh, dude, thank you so much for calling. I got another call coming in, but uh, thanks By for way, watching. I like What's up? Sorry, I only hung up. Oh, well, thanks right, for calling, call man. <laughs> All right, who's here? Hello. Um, my name's Angie. Hey, Angie, what's happening? Uh, not much. <laughs> All right, well, you're on the show. What's popping? Um, well, I wanted to talk about Roman Reigns because everybody seems to be burying him lately. Okay, let's talk in about it. In my him. opinion, at least in chat, um, he, because he is part of the Samoan dynasty, he has big shoes to fill. He does. Because everybody's comparing him to The Rock. Which is not fair. You can't compare anyone to The Rock. No. <laughs> but, um, I, the way I kind of, but to be honest, the way I kind of looked at him today is, um, if Cena and Rock had a child, it'd be Roman Reigns. Uh, that's, <laughs> I haven't, I mean, that's, that's something I haven't heard before. Um. Why would you say well, that? Well, because everybody, yeah, last night, everybody was calling him the Samoan Cena. So I okay. thought about it, and I'm like, well, he's related to The Rock, and if he's being compared to Cena, if they had a child, it'd be Roman Reigns. Yeah, that's not a bad point. I mean, so you're obviously, you are pro-Roman Reigns. You are a fan of his, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, not so much with the rock anymore because I think he sold out and that's but that's a whole other story. Oh, come on. How could you get mad at the rock for What do you mean he sold out? Come on, Angie. What do you mean? Well, okay. You also have to understand I'm from Hawaii, so Okay. The rock is like, you know, royalty here. <laughs> do you mean he sold out his Samoan heritage no. or he sold out meaning he had success outside no, of no, wrestling? No, no, it's just it's it's no, it's just I, I feel like how some people do where they say, you know, he, he came back and then he said he wasn't going away and then now he's even too busy to come back. What are you talking? He just came back two months ago mean, and, and punked out Rusev. It was hilarious. He came back. He was in New York and he stopped in. You yeah, know? That, that's true. And the, the WrestleMania thing was awesome this year, especially because it was like right around my birthday. So that was a perfect birthday present. Gotcha. But... Well, let, let me let me hit, let me hit the Rock first. I think I think saying the Rock sold out is, I think that's unfair because number one, the Rock showed the world that hey, a former pro wrestler can become a megastar, and he still comes back to the WWE and because he hasn't forgotten where he came from. So I think I think doing the calling him a sellout, I think that's really unfair. You're entitled to your opinion, but I think you know that's what everyone wants is a chance to have success. I mean, who doesn't want to have a chance to be in movies right. and be a star? And on Roman Reigns. I'm with you. I think there's too much pressure on him to be the star, and part of that falls on how much they're trying to shove him down people's throats. Roman Reigns has a lot of potential, but you got to remember, you know, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, they were toiling in the indies for years. They were building their character. They were right. becoming stars on their own. You know, Roman Reigns just graduated from college like six years ago. Right, right. So I, I'm with you. I, I think yeah, that. I, 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 it, I, go ahead. I, I, yeah, maybe I am being too harsh on The Rock. I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're allowed to your opinion. I, like I said, I, that's just, you know, that's why we're having a good conversation, just giving our opinions back and forth. But as far as Roman Reigns, I'm with you on that one. I think um, people need to take their time with him. It's just whether or not the WWE wants to take their time with him. Because if you're going to give the guy the ball, he only not has to perform in the ring. He's got to perform on the mic. 
he's got to be Superman, literally, aside from just the Superman punch. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, everyone wants to see him succeed, and uh, and he seems like a really legitimate dude. Now, Rollins and Ambrose, obviously, they're more ready than he is right now, but Roman is, you know, like you said, Samoan royalty. He seems to have the pedigree for it, so. Yeah. We'll see. I, I, and I think it's too early yeah. to say. He, I don't think he's res- headlining WrestleMania per se. A lot of people are already predicting it. I don't think that's a guarantee yet. I don't know about you, but that's. I don't think it is. I, I think my idea that I was thinking about was maybe they should like team him up with the Usos and bring Rikishi back. If, I don't, although I don't think that'll happen, but I don't know. Promote the the Samoan aspect of it, or bring maybe even Roman's dad if he's well enough health-wise bring like off a off and Zika or do something to take the pressure off of Roman because the Usos had an awesome year too right so I think the three of them and because Roman's not that great on the mic yet the Usos have a little bit more they're better on the mic than eh, Roman is are they though I don't think the Usos are that much better uh, I mean, they're they're twins, and they have awkward backstage segments. I think if you're twins, you should have a little bit better chemistry on the mic. Right. I love. Don't get me wrong. I love the Usos. We I, we haven't seen a tag team like them in years, but they they got some work to do on the mic. That's for sure. I mean, I'm I'm all for them. I, I wish their title reign would have ran longer. To be honest with you, I think uh, it was historic, but I would have loved to see them go a little bit longer. And the whole Rikishi thing. I mean, he's got his own promotion right now. He's a busy guy. I don't know if that would really go but um i'm with you though i mean you want you're very proud of your samoan heritage i think it's awesome that you're supporting them and, and i and we all want people to succeed it's just we you know you, you don't want to burn out roman reigns too early so we'll see what happens there right right well i i kind of ha- this is my bold prediction for mania because they're going to be in san francisco and that's from where the usos are from they may get the titles back yeah wrestlemania just saying all right yeah it's possible. I mean, I don't think the Mizdows are going to hang on to it until WrestleMania, but uh, <laughs> but we'll see there. So where are you from? Where are you calling from, you by the way? you know what's going? I'm calling from Hawaii. I actually haven't watched Raw yet. Oh, wow. It hasn't aired here yet. Okay, then I'm not, I'm not going to give away too much. What island are you on? I'm on the Big Island. Nice. I'm in Hilo. Okay. All right. Very nice. Well, thanks for calling in. This is and, so cool. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually here. The the Rock's cousins own two restaurants here, so paid for by the Rock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I'm I'm not Samoan. I'm just from Hawaii. Got it. Just so you know. So you're a, you're a, you're a Hawaii you're a Hawaii native. Yes, so, I grew up here. So you're Hawaiian, not Samoan. No, I'm not Hawaiian either. Oh, you're I'm just, just from Hawaii. You're just someone lucky <laughs> enough to be born in Hawaii. <laughs> All right, great. Well, Angie, yeah. thank you for calling in. Enjoy Raw, and uh, hope you enjoyed TLC. And thank you for watching, and keep watching. I promise there'll be more people in the future, not just my dumb ass sitting here. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more calls right now, Steve? Are we, we solo for a little bit? Not yet. All right, man. Well, hey, these calls have been great. So if you're in chat roll, there's like a hundred of you, and you got a phone on you, feel free to call in. Uh, a lot of you have some great comments, so uh, feel free to just fire away at me. Other than that, I'm just going to keep on talking. I don't know about you guys, but when Jericho was hosting Raw tonight, Caller. I knew. Oh Jesus! I was just going to say I knew something had to be up when Jericho was hosting Raw, especially when he put himself in a match against Paul Heyman. That was either Extreme Rules, <laughs> Extreme Rules, No Holds Barred, or Street Fight. Uh, if you ask me, all three of those, that's that's dangerous. Anyway, let's let's get the call and see what we're going to talk about. Hey, who's this? It's fairly easy to call back into you guys. It's Jason. Oh, what's up, Jason? Yeah, so that's great that I can call back. You got it. What's up? So, um, yeah, I think uh, I just also wanted to say that, like, the paradigm from the beginning of the year is so different. Like, we had Daniel Bryan and CM Punk like the two most beautiful people in the company and now it's just kind of more sad i guess i mean yeah i i see your point there i mean obviously both guys have uh had a lot of things happen daniel bryan's you know his health is is the number one thing in his life right now and yeah he's not quite healthy i mean i talked to him at SummerSlam, and 
you know, the, the, the neck injury wasn't even his issue at SummerSlam. He had another nerve issue. And, um, you know, being a physical therapist, I could tell you, if you're having nerve problems, the last thing you can do is get in the ring. And so I'm glad they're holding Daniel Bryan out until he's completely healthy. Because when he comes back, I'm hoping it'll be another historic run. But, you know, for those four months we had Daniel Bryan in 2014, he gave us so much. I mean, he gave us an incredible moment at WrestleMania 30. He won two matches. Um, and I think, you know, we all have to remember that. I think, yeah, I think by far, like, he was definitely the superstar of the year. Because, like, there's some legends who have never been able to defeat Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton. He did it one night. And he was pretty much a target in the triple threat match. So, And to look like Daniel Bryan and be, like, pretty much kind of bullied for your height and all that, it was incredible. It was, like, by far the best moments. And I also think when he was in the steel cage with Wyatt in the beginning of the year, that was definitely top five moment of the year for me. Well. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, you know, you look at guys like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, they've they've flipped the script. They've completely changed the game because of guys like them. You know, now we, we WWE is bringing in guys to NXT that are legitimate stars already. You saw Kevin Owens debut. You know, those of us out in Southern California, <clears throat> we've known all about Kevin Steen <laughs> for years. And they knew when they brought him in, it wasn't going to take long to get him on TV. And we'll talk about, we could talk about NXT Revolution. What the hell? Um, and so, yeah, Daniel Bryan, I mean, to do what he did at WrestleMania 30 at a guy of his stature, he's not a big guy, it was, it was groundbreaking because, you know, no longer do we have the, the, the big monsters that we used to have. Yeah, they're there, but Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, they show yeah. that it's not about size. It's about, you know, obviously the size of your heart and what you can do in the ring, and, and they, they electrified 70,000 people. Yeah. I thought when, like, Bryan and Punk were, like, feuding with the Wyatts for, like, the four weeks they did in 2013 – I thought that was, like, some of the best television ever. <clears throat> no doubt about that. As far as Punk goes, I mean, like I said, I I, I said this last week on, on Wrestling Compadres. At this point, people just need to move on, as he has. Is he making a good decision yeah. to go to UFC? That's not for us to judge. I mean, we would all love the kind of employment and financial freedom that he has to just go do something random. You know what I mean? And so he's got that freedom. Yeah. And like he said, he's either going to kick some ass or get his ass kicked, and it's time to support him or not support him. It's really up to you. Um, but I say kudos to him. If he wants to move on with his life, uh, you know, he's done everything he could in wrestling. He, he transcended into pop culture. Uh, him and Brian, they opened people's eyes up to the indies. I mean, what else could you ask for? Yeah. So. I also think, like, uh, Roman Reigns, he's definitely – I'm kind of, like, 99% behind him because, like – what he did at the Rumble, he's the only man of the Shield to fight for the title yet. And uh, also, only member of the Shield to actually pin another member of the Shield when he pinned Rollins. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. And you bring but Ambrose, up. like, top five mic skills and oh, please. makes most of what he does entertaining. Top two mic and skills. I mean, you bring up a good point about the Shield. It's not often when a faction breaks up and all three guys become legitimate stars, but they really are. I mean, Seth Rollins is, is the perfect heel. He's slimy. He, he slithers away. He's cowardly. That's exactly what you want from an old school heel. Dean Ambrose can do either one. The guy's completely off kilter. He's the closest thing we've seen to, you know, a Stone Cold or Brian Pillman attitude in years. Um, and, and then Roman Reigns, like I said, untapped potential. We're going to see how it goes. But uh, unfortunately, Jason, we have to move on. But thanks for the call again, man. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right, so like I was saying, Monday Night Raw, we're just going to run through whatever we can here. Obviously, I'm by myself. You guys are going to watch Raw yourself. I'm just going to hit the highlights. Um, when Jericho made that match with Paul Heyman, I knew something was going to be up. I didn't know we'd see Brock Lesnar, but that's pretty much what happened, especially, you know, Heyman comes down uh, dressed like Rocky going for a jog in 1976. He's got the, the wrist taped up, like ready to go, and Heyman, I mean, what else can you say about him on the microphone? He... He's unlike anyone we've ever seen. You can arguably say he's in the top few uh, managers of all time, without a doubt. And the way he delivered his fear into the aggression bringing out Brock Lesnar, I mean, how do you not enjoy that? Of course, Lesnar comes out. You know, he gives an F5 to Jericho quicker than Paul Heyman can say Jew and Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I can't even say it correctly. I love that. And, and Jericho's credit, he comes back to get to get his ass kicked to make Lesnar look powerful. And it doesn't take much to make Lesnar look powerful, but Jericho did that. I thought that was really cool. Um, I love the New Day. I don't know what you guys feel. Maybe because I'm a big fan of Kofi. I'm a big fan of E. I'm a big fan of uh, Xavier Woods. I, I think they're all 
personally, they're all great dudes. I think they're all super entertaining. They've been making funny videos uh, on the internet for months and months and months now. I feel like the crowd is very wishy-washy with them, and I think a lot of that is the Cena, the same people at Boo Cena are kind of given a hard time to the New Day, and that's their prerogative. I really hope the New Day is fantastic, whether or not they're face or heel. They're doing stuff in the ring that other teams aren't doing. Um, I think putting them up against Goldust and Stardust is tough because I love Goldust and Stardust. I mean, they're incredible. I mean, Cody, Stardust, uh, has really embraced the character. Not only embraced the character, he's become Stardust. And so putting them against them in their first feud, I think that's a little bit tough because you have, you have fans that are conflicted. You know, you, they want to like the New Day, but ah, Goldust and Stardust, they've been here. They've proved, them, they've proved themselves. They've, they've had a title run. So I understand why fans maybe are a little lukewarm, uh, especially since they keep going over on Stardust and Goldust. So I think the New Day is going to work. I think it's going to happen. Um, all right. Uh, chat roll. <laughs> chat roll's not really into it, and I get that. But you got to appreciate all three of those dudes. They're all very unique, and, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping the best for them for sure. Uh, Roman Reigns obviously came back again tonight, speared Fandango. The question has to remain, what did Fandango come back for? I don't know if any of us know. It's supposed to be new and improved. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's him and Rosa. They kind of dance. He's dressed in all black, and he's he, he, he gets crushed by Roman Reigns. So I don't know. I would really love to see Fandango just go solo. He knows how to talk. He's a great character. Johnny Curtis knows what he's doing. I would love to see him just be as weird as he wants to be on his own without needing a dance partner. You know what I mean? Just get out there. Do what you do. If you're going to do comedic stuff, perfect. Um, but obviously, Roman Reigns came back, speared the hell out of him. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, are we setting up a Roman Reigns Big Show feud? I don't know. But that certainly seems to be the case. Uh about nine Superman punches the big show in the last 24 hours. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, moving on, Miz taking out Jimmy Uso. Obviously, I'm, well, kind of. last, uh, Not tonight. Last night. I'm losing track. My mind's uh, going crazy. Jimmy Uso ends up getting the splash, takes out the Miz. Um, but obviously, the real storyline here is Naomi, Miz, Jimmy Uso. Kind of a weird triangle thing. No idea where it's going, but Miz and Miz Dow still tag team champions. How long would that last? I don't know, because uh, Sandow cannot get much more elaborate in his stunt doubling as he is. I mean, the fact he's throwing himself in the ring, he's throwing himself over the rope, but the fans are into it, and who wouldn't be? <laughs> uh, I think people just love Sandow, and why not? The guy has taken every gimmick thrown at him, and he's hit it out of the park just about every time, whether he's impersonating LeBron James or he's being a stunt double. So I don't know about you guys. I can't wait for that moment where Sandow finally stands up to Miz, and then we have a feud there. I think that's going to be uh, fantastic down the road. Um, moving on, uh, pretty much get to the main event here, and then we'll close out. Oh, Adam Rose. I don't know what happened tonight. He ends up facing Kane, and uh, to everyone's joy, Kane completely destroys Adam Rose in about seven seconds, <clears throat> and then he gets a tombstone to the bunny. So I don't know. What does this mean exactly? Is Adam Rose going to blame the bunny for getting destroyed by Kane? Are we finally going to have the Kane-Adam Rose thing? Or is this just the end of Adam Rose? I don't know, and I don't think either one of us know. I think it would be cool to see who the bunny is, if it is an NXT star, if it's a returning star. But the way Kane destroyed the bunny tonight and Adam Rose, it makes you wonder if, if something is going a totally uh, different direction. So... We'll find out there. Uh, finally, main events. Is there anything else we got to talk about, guys? I don't know. I mean, Rusev and Lana destroy Jack Swagger. Um, cool little thing with uh, with Jericho there. We're going to have Ryback Rusev. <clears throat> That's going to be a lot of stiff shots there. Um, Lana, fantastic once again. Uh, she's a really, really great heel manager. She's managed to pull it off in a short amount of time. She just She's in the moment. She knows how to react, and uh, and she knows how to scream. What else could you ask for in a female heel? Uh, right, main event time. I already talked about it a little bit. <clears throat> Seth Rollins versus John Cena. I thought for the second night in a row they told a great story. And even almost more so in this one. You could tell <clears throat> how bad they both wanted out of that cage. You know, Rollins trying to escape early on, Cena catching him. Uh, Rollins kicking out of an AA. That doesn't happen very often. And so 
And then, of course, J&J Security slamming the door off Cena's head. Um, but yet, Seth Rollins still not being able to escape, almost getting to the top, climbing over the cage. Cena catches him by his arms, brings him back in. Then a massive AA off the top rope. I thought it was over at that point. Um, it was well executed. But, of course, that was not the last time we saw Brock Lesnar because he comes back to uh, three German suplexes to John Cena, um, an F5 to John Cena. At that point, I'm like, great, he's going to destroy Rollins. Let's set ourselves up. Maybe a nice little uh, triple threat match. Because I don't know about you guys. Do we want to see Cena Lesnar 3? I don't know. If we're gonna There's going to be a I... triple threat match. <laughs> we're going to have a triple threat match. Maybe not. Um, that's the question. It, you know, because if, 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 if Lesnar's having this amazing run, don't we want to see him feud with, with someone different? I know I would like to see it, even if it adds Rollins into a triple threat. Or maybe, you know, Rollins does cash in at Royal Rumble. But what happened tonight, Brock Lesnar did not do anything to Seth Rollins. Just when we thought he was going to get destroyed, he had him in a steel cage. Paul Heyman puts out the proverbial handshake. They shake hands. Lesnar leaves. And Seth Rollins easily escapes the cage and celebrates with J&J Security. And we go off the air with him on top of J&J Security's shoulders. So the question remains, now that we obviously have seen a Lesnar big-time feud again, where does that leave Rollins? I mean, he's leaving happy tonight. Uh, he's got the Money in the Bank briefcase. Um, I'm going to try to check uh, chat roll, really. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's Kathy's boyfriend on, on chat roll is cracking me up, and that's a creepy name. Change your damn name. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know. We're going to see. we got six weeks to build up to the Royal Rumble. Uh, it's my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I mean, next to WrestleMania, but I even kind of like the Rumble more. And so we got a lot of stuff to take care of over the next six weeks. But, you know, we lasted 42 minutes together. I actually had a great time. I thought all the phone calls were really fun. And, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And I hope the YouTube comments aren't too negative. I'm not going to look at them because I'm very insecure. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you follow Dale on Twitter, at TheWalkingDale. Follow Kathy on Twitter, at Katherine Kelly. And our fourth guest changes every week, so who the hell knows. I'm at Jay Quasto. If you like stand-up comedy, I'm at the Denver Comedy Works this week, Wednesday to Saturday. And if you're on the East Coast, Sunday, December 21st, I have my uh, yearly Christmas show in Bethlehem in Pennsylvania near my hometown. So hit me up on social media. I'd be happy to give you all the information. Other than that, Wrestling and Padres every week on Nerdist. Uh, got a couple great episodes coming up. So guys, can't thank you enough for watching and listening on iTunes. We'll see you and have a great holiday. This might be the last one of the year. I don't know. Merry Christmas, everybody. We love you. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, y'all. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.